out. He said, where one or two are gathered. And we just want to praise the Lord. I'd like to praise the Lord for being able to come into the house of God and worship in freedom and in truth. Um, I was hearing on the news as I was uh, out today on the, uh, the car radio about um, Israel and uh, how we're seeing prophecy being fulfilled right now in the land of Israel. And you know, um, for the past several weeks, they have been in bomb shelters. The majority of those people in Israel have been having to run or stay in their bomb shelters. I want you to think about that for a moment. How do you get out to get food? How do you get out to get water? You know, they have those things stored in those bomb shelters because they know that the world around them, for the majority of the world around them, they are surrounded by their enemies. And we need to understand as Christians that we're surrounded by our enemies. And this church is our bomb shelter. And every opportunity that you have, you better be in your bomb shelter. Because Satan is running rampant. I believe the Antichrist has been loosed. I believe he, that is why we are seeing our world in the disarray that it's in. And it's not getting any better. And I just want to praise him for being here tonight. And if you will, turn to page 300. And we're going to open tonight with the song Without Him. Without Him. John 15, 5. It says, uh, you know, apart from you, I can do nothing. Talking about Jesus. If I don't have Jesus, I can't do anything. But with Jesus, you can do anything. Praise the Lord. With His help, with His strength. He'll open doors for you. He'll give you strength. He'll build you up. He'll watch over you. And that's what we're going to sing tonight. Without him, I could do nothing. so much. Praise the Lord. It's good to see everybody on this Wednesday night. Hope you've had a good day. Amen. Amen. Pray the, I know the Lord's been with us. 
He has. He's been with us all day long, whether we realize it or not. He's been with us every step of the way. Uh, good Again, it's good to see each and every one of you tonight. Praise the Lord for you. Uh, praise the Lord for his mercy and grace. Amen. Uh, he's, he's, he's brought us safe thus far, and he's going to lead us safely home. No matter what we face, no matter what we're going through, uh, he's going to do that. Before we take some prayer requests, I just wanted to mention uh, Miss Tasha wants to have a quick meeting uh, right after uh, a VBS meeting, Vacation Bible School meeting, right after the service tonight uh, to share a few things uh, with you if you're interested in helping. And uh, we pray that you are. We'll, we'll have that just probably just be a few minutes uh, right after the service. I don't believe she'll hold you long. So uh, let's, let's get excited about that and be praying. Uh, about VBS and um, being involved in that. And our children and our young people are our most precious commodity right now. They are the church. Uh, some would say the church of tomorrow, but they really are the church of today. And uh, so we need, to, we need to invest in them, invest our time in them, invest our love, invest our prayers, and uh, last but not least, invest the Word of God in them that they'll be able to carry you know somebody's going to have to carry the torch when you and I we're going to get too tired to carry it one of these days and we'll lay it down and praise the Lord God will have one of these young people come up alongside and pick up the torch and carry it on really I guess I should have said the blood stained banner of the Lord Jesus Christ amen amen praise the Lord any prayer requests tonight Wanda and David, we're, uh, we miss, we're missing uh, Wanda and David, missing them, and I, I'm praying for them. I pray that the Lord will, uh, let's pray a special blessing on that dear family because uh, we've all been through stuff and are going through stuff. And I, I, whatever the case is, whatever they're, they're going through, first of all, I want them to know that we love them, uh, and secondly, the Lord loves them. Amen. Praise the Lord. Ross, yeah, Ross and Justin, Sarah, yes, yes, anyone else? Luke and Haley. Okay, pray for Brother Jimmy having some kidney stone issues. Continue praying for uh, Brother Jamie and his back. Oh, uh, Michaela, yes, let's remember Michaela, yep. Brother Larry, let's remember Tasha. Yes, 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 pray for the Lord. Brother Martin, yes, yes, sir, yes, remember Martin. Mm -hmm. Yes, Let's remember him. Yeah, yeah, all those that are traveling, uh, uh, Gina, Jeff, um, Frank and Ruth and then some of their family members are traveling. They're out west uh, enjoying the, the Lord's creation. Let's pray for them. Yes. 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 Amen. Yes. Yes. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you. Yes. Israel. Absolutely. Pray for the peace of Israel. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Any others? Yes. Men and women on our jobs. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Right. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord for that praise report. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes, yes. Pray for pray for President Trump. Amen. Praying for our youth. Yes. Continue to pray for uh, Don and Mary Sue. Um, uh, think about Miss Jenny, um, uh, Faye. Uh, there's uh, Eula, and uh, there's there, there's several. Miss Willa, absolutely, absolutely. Miss Willa, uh, miss all of these. Uh, miss Kathy, and you know those that are having health problems and those that are seeking answers. There's some that are just seeking answers, and it is it is my prayer that God will answer answer these things that that people are seeking. Brenda Stribling, yes, pray for her. Pray for Doris, yes. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. All right, Julie. Yes, yeah. Pray for Julie. She's still in the process of moving, so I pray for uh, Roseanne and uh, the family that's that's moving and uh, a lot of memories and a lot of things that uh, were in that house and. Well, understand, understand that we, uh, uh, I figured out uh, we, we uh, lived, uh, Elizabeth and I and the kids, we lived in, uh, on Love's Road in uh, Cherokee County uh, for nearly 30 years. And it was out in the country. And uh, uh, so we had some separation anxiety over that. Uh, so we know how you feel and still still miss the place still even this day miss that place so we understand we'll continue to pray for y'all okay uh, social media uh, Virginia Davis uh, my sister in the assisted living uh, suffering from a brain tumor also my daughter-in-law uh, lost her mother yesterday from liver cancer in Korea uh, she only got to spend 10 minutes with her before she passed away pray for her and the entire family in Korea. Brother Dale Stiles, uh, Carl Haney has lung cancer and heart problems. Uh, Tommy and Mary Hudson, uh, praying for Tommy and Mary. I went to school with uh, Tommy. Um, Robin Carlin, please continue to pray for my dad, Robert Spencer, and my mom, uh, Ann. They've been feeling bad lately, and I have a few unspoken. We're praying for uh, Robert and Ann, we love y'all. We appreciate y'all, Robin and TJ and the whole family so much. Uh, Kathy Carter Wilson, my husband, is facing heart surgery. We appreciate all your prayers. Uh, Kathy Poteet Wilson, please continue to pray for my son, Sean Wilson. Hunter and his family, pray for the lost, pray for the United States. Uh, Elaine Williams, pray for Mike Williams and the loss of his son and the whole family. Uh, Diane Costner, prayers for me as I have surgery. Uh, Linda Phillips, please pray for me. Uh, Kim Brimer, pray for me. Also, my sister Robin, God knows, uh, and my Andy is still doing well. Praise the Lord. Uh, Brother Terry Ziegler, pray for our pastor and his family. Uh, Terry is also seeing a new doctor next week. Uh, Diane Hampton, pray for our family. Uh, Pam uh, and Daryl, please continue to pray for my co-worker, Rhett Heron. He has cancer, and the doctor gives him months, but we know who has the final word. Amen. Uh, Lisa Smith, unspoken. Joanne Myers, good friend of mine. Steve, unspoken. Roger, Roger Cozort, health issues, and pray for a single mom and her 15-year-old daughter. Uh, Anthony Auma, please pray for my health. My body needs healing, God's provision and protection. Uh, Kathy uh, Moore Worley, several unspoken, Mary Sue and Don, our country and my family. Uh, Virgil Hampton, uh, Randy Beam, Sherry uh, Adams, pray for Sammy, going to have surgery, uh, sh soul shoulder surgery. Uh, Wanda McCall, our friend David Cruz, passed away this morning, 40, 40 years old, leaving behind two teenagers. Bless that dear family. Uh, Kathy Wright, unspoken. Harold Hooper, uh, continue to play.
continue to pray for Brother Harold. He said, pray for us as we start the fair in Biloxi, Mississippi, uh, that many souls will come to Christ and be saved. Uh, Charlene uh, Channel praying. Jerry Creasman praying for healing in my body. Uh, Lauren Elizabeth Unspoken. Martha Plemons, my family. Donna Starnes dealing with more side effects of COVID. Randy Beam, Jill Beam need our prayers. Uh, Daryl Purser pray for Pastor Preacher Ray Walters Jr. Unspoken. Also Pastor Keith Walker and his son Justin, my sons, and for the peace of Jerusalem. And uh, Romeo Leban Gray uh, pray uh, for us. So that's a pretty good list there. And, and if we, pr- yes, ma'am. Oh, wow. Okay, let's pray for Misty. And, and uh, yes, yes. Yes, let's, okay, yes, let's pray for, pray for Bryson, yes. Continue to pray for our daughter, Katie, pray, and continue to lift her up, uh, and continue to pray for all the ministries that are here uh, going out from our church. I appreciate uh, Brother Jamie and Brother Darrell uh, last night on the Savior's Cross broadcast, continue to pray for that uh, missionary e- effort. Uh, continue to pray for inspiration for inmates, our Bible ministry. Uh, we can, and yes, Jessica's reminded me, we already mentioned it, honey, to pray for uh, our Bible school uh, that's upcoming. So anyone else, anything else? All right, let's all pray together and let's talk to God for just a few minutes. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you that we can come to you In the name of your precious Son, Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we have the opportunity. We we appreciate, Lord, the opportunity to come to you. And uh, we lift these requests up. Uh, Lord, we're living in perilous times. Lord, we're living in very, very difficult days. Uh, Lord, uh, the love of many, it seems, are waxing cold. Father, I pray, Lord, that you will give us a great, great burning in our hearts and in our souls for revival. Lord, let us come together, Lord, in many cases, Lord, putting differences aside. And Lord, let us serve the one true God, just worshiping you in spirit and in truth. Lord, help us, Lord, to go in this day. Lord, help us to make the right decisions, Lord, as we go forward, Lord, during this time. Lord, many folks, Lord, are seeking guidance, Lord, about things in their lives. And, Lord, I pray, Lord, that they will find the answer. But, Lord, I dare say the answer that everyone seeks is found in the cross. Lord, I believe that no matter what the question is, whether it's a question of, of, of personal things, whether it's a question of health, whether it's a question even of where to worship, uh, Lord, I believe that the answer is found in the cross of Christ. Lord, we believe that, Lord, and that's where I look, Lord. That is where I must look. That's where I must go to find the answers, Lord, that I'm seeking, Lord, in my life. Lord, as I, Lord, uh, look for guidance, Lord, and as I look for you to, to lead me and guide me, Lord, I know that the answer, Lord, is not found, Lord, in my own mechanics. The answer is not found in my own way of thinking. Lord, the answer is found, number one, in the Word of God, number two, in the cross of Christ. Lord, your sacrifice, Lord, is where all answers are found. Lord, let us see that. Lord, there may be some folks, Lord, that do, that do not realize that the answers, Lord, that they're looking for can only be found in one place. We look all over the world. We look all over the place and we talk to multitudes of people concerning answers to questions that we have seeking the right answer. Well, Jesus said that he will guide us, that the Holy Spirit, he will lead the spirit of truth and he will guide us into all truth. And that is the truth that we need. We need truth that is from above. Lord, we do not need truth that comes from man. For Lord, man is a liar, but God is a God that cannot lie. The Bible says, let every man be a liar and let God be the truth. You are the truth, Lord, and we seek that in you. Lord, we ask, Lord, for healing. 
Lord, that we believe comes through the atonement. All of these requests, Lord. Lord, we dare not ask you, Lord, that or come to you with a spirit of unbelief, Lord, that maybe healing is maybe so, or maybe this, or maybe that. Lord, you tell us in your word that by your stripes we are healed, Lord. And we're going to continue, Lord, to ask you, Lord, for healing in our bodies. Lord, there's many here tonight, Lord, that needs healing in their bodies. Physical healing, Lord. And then things, Lord, the age and pains and things, Lord, that we go to you, Lord, that we go to you for all of these things, Lord. Lord, maybe emotional, maybe, uh, Lord, things in our, in our spiritual life that we can go to you, Lord. Lord, anything that we lack, anything, Lord, that is coming up short, Lord, in our life, we can find in you. Lord, continue to bless the service tonight. Lord, bless those that will come and sing. Lord, thank you so much for them. Lord, just continue to bless our church, Lord, and Lord, help Lord, help your servant, Lord, in just a little while as we break the bread of life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Sounded that good, did you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. God's good. <laughs> I know it. It did. Me
Hallelujah. Brother Jamie, I'm going to leave this one on for you. This green. This. Amen. Praise the Lord. See if the pulpit mic's still okay, on. Thank you. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to add a little something to that before <clears throat> I sing, Brother Jeff. Uh, the Lord has answered, I can't tell you how many prayers in our lives since we've been here. Just in the time that we've been here, the Lord has, I mean, one right after the other. Amen. Yeah. <clears throat> Amen. That's right. That's right. Amen. 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 Amen, Jesus. Amen. I'm going to try to sing, I, I found the lily in the valley. Amen, brother. Amen. Pray the Lord. Amen. Sing it, brother. Bless Sing it. it. All alone and broken hearted, trying to calm the raging battle in my mind. Yeah, that's right. In search of many answers. That my troubled soul just could not seem to find. Yes, Lord. I saw a flower blooming where there was no rain or sunshine. And I knew not that this flower would change the rest of my life I found the lily in my valley I found strength when I was warm I found a place to leave my burdens I found refuge from the storm Place where I could trade my dark skies To beaming rays of sunshine I found the lily in my valley And he blooms all the time Yes. So if you're down and broken hearted And you just can't seem yes. to find peace of mind And you're searching for your answers But your problems are getting worse all the time Just reach your hand to Jesus He'll take you in and break The ties that bind 
He'll be your lily in your valley, and you can watch him bloom all the time. He'll be your lily in your valley. He'll be your strength when you're warm. He'll be the place to leave your burdens. He'll give you refuge from the storm. Place where you can trade your dark skies to beaming rays of sunshine. He'll be your lily in your valley. And He'll bloom all the time. I found the lily in my valley. I found strength when I was worn. I found a place to leave my burdens. And He gave me refuge from the storm. Place where I could trade my dark skies. Beaming rays of sun. I found a lily in my valley And he blooms all the time He'll be your lily in your valley And he'll bloom all the time song, what a song, what a word, it reminded me of the song of Solomon, chapter 2, I turned to it as Brother Jamie was singing, I am the rose of Sharon, and the lily of the valley, as the lily among the thorns. So is my love among the daughters. Oh, he is the lily of our valley. He is, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, amen. Well, if you have your Bibles tonight, I would ask you to turn with me to uh, the first book, Genesis chapter number 32. Genesis chapter number 32. Uh, Verses 24 through 31. I want to speak to our hearts with the help of the Lord for a few moments tonight on, I guess, what I would uh, like to introduce maybe with the Lord's help, that is, uh, obviously, the series of messages uh, on how do I live a victorious Christian life. And um, I'll be using as a reference, and I used as a reference book for uh, this message, uh, a book written uh, by Brother Swaggart with the like title, uh, Brother Swaggart, How Do I Live a Victorious Christian Life? And uh, I believe it will help us. Uh, and there's one thing that, uh, that, I, that I dwell on for West Franklin is that you and I will understand what it's going to take to have victory over the world, the flesh, and the devil. And uh, the Lord uh, it wants the saints to be equipped. He wants us, uh, he wants us to know some things. Uh, he, uh, he wants us to not be ignorant of Satan's devices. And I want to speak to you tonight with a, for a few moments with the title that I've titled, Coming to the End uh, of Ourselves. Let's, let's 
get quickly into the Word of God. Genesis chapter number 32, starting at verse number 24. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore is that thou dost ask after my name? In other words, why? I guess I should say, You know who I am. And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. And notice verse 31. And as he, Jacob, passed over Peniel, the sun rose upon him, and he halted upon his thigh. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I ask, Lord, that you begin, Lord, afresh. Lord, to reopen, Lord, and continue to uh, reveal, Lord, this great message, Lord, that we need uh, as believers to help us on our Christian way. And Lord, I pray, Lord, that you will continue, Lord, to open up this great revelation, Lord, of your death, burial, and resurrection, Lord, and what Lord, we are to receive in it, Lord, and how we are to lay everything else aside, Lord, when it comes to the things, Lord, that face us in our life, Lord, and allow you to be preeminent. Allow what you have accomplished on Calvary and for us to come to the very end of our mechanics and our flesh and our uh, machinery, Lord, so to speak, to, to be able to handle problems in our lives. Lord, that victory, Lord, may be won in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, we, have, we as Christians, we have a choice uh, in every situation, in every challenge of life. We have a choice. We have a choice to be led of the Spirit. We have a choice to be led by ourselves. The Bible speaks of it as being led by our flesh. And to be, to be led of the Spirit is to allow. Now think about this. I want you to, uh, let's, let's try to get it in focus. Whatever it is that you're going through right now, right now, to, today, What's got a hold of you, what's got a hold of your family, what's got a hold of your mind, what's got a hold of your spirit, whatever it is, let's, let's bring it into focus right now. You and I have two choices how we're going to approach what we're dealing with. We're going to be led by the Spirit, which we're going to allow the Spirit to fulfill God's promises in our lives. That's an option. We're going to trust Him. We're going to look to Christ and His finished work at Calvary as the answer to all things. That's one option to what you're going through and what I'm going through. Option number two is to be led by our own flesh or depend upon our own ability, depend upon our strength, depend upon our own power, depend upon our own reasoning. And I love this, to depend upon our own intellect. Boy, we are some smart people. We got a choice. And these choices are laid out in God's Word. This is not something that someone has made up for you and I to try to wiggle and squirm our way 
along the Christian journey. God has given, given us a plan. He's given us a plan or a pursuit or a path to victory. He has. But the trouble is, is us. I realize this more and more and more about my own self every day and all of the things that I try to take on and worry about and all the challenges, God would tell me, just let me do it. But the problem is, I won't. So there's a struggle. There's a struggle there. We're going to talk about that in just a few moments. Smith Wigglesworth, I want to read a couple quotes to you. He was a great uh, Pentecostal preacher of the early 1900s. He said this, speaking of us as Christians. He says, as we look over our spiritual career, we shall always see that there has been a good deal of our own day. And that the end of our days was the beginning of God's day. Does that make sense? We, in, in our Christian career, we seem to have the spotlight. If you want to call it a career or a journey. We have the spotlight. I'll, I love you, but I'll handle it. When we don't let him do it, that's what we're saying. We may not say it with our mouth, but we say it with our actions. Most, if not all, of us Christians, we struggle with something, whether it be sin, and that is a big one. Get it in your head. You are still going to be tempted and you are still going to fail. You are still going to struggle with sin. But sin shall not have dominion over you. We've got to get those things down in our spirit. Whether it be sin, whether it be Satan, whether it be self. The struggle is real. <laughs> but in reality... The struggle, the struggle is real. Let me try to put it. The struggle is real because the real struggle is not with the sin, Satan, or the world. But the real struggle is between me and God. That's where the struggle lies. Why do I struggle? Why am I uh, constantly stressed? Why am I constantly upset? It's not because of God. You gotta, you, you, you gotta, we gotta look at it this way. We, we, we've got three things. We've got three things at, at play here. We've got Jeff. We've got God. And we've got the problem. Now, Jeff. And the problem, that don't work. Jeff's got to get out of the way. But God and the problem is where the answer lies. God the Holy Spirit. And God the Holy Spirit only works if he can have it all. He won't work if you say, I'm going to give you 99.9% .9 of this problem, but I'll take care of the 0.1%. You have disqualified yourself from any help from God. He says, I'll do it all because my son paid it all. My son has been victorious over all. In reality... Our struggle is with the Lord. This is another quote. The Christian's true triumphs are God's triumphs over him. 
Jimmy, your true triumphs and victories is when God gains victory over you. When he can push you out of the way and sometimes getting you and I out of the way is painful. Sometimes God has to do some things. We cannot enter into the deep things of God. We cannot until we are free from our own ideas and schemes. Now the man in which we're going to talk about for a few moments, and I will try to hurry through this, but this is so wonderful. If, 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 we, will, if we will take God's word and say, okay, God, God's word has the answer for what I'm going through. Father, it, it, your word has the answer to what I'm dealing with right now. Please open it up to me. Please reveal it to me. I will guarantee you he will reveal himself to you. He didn't write this book for nothing. He gets no royalties from it. The only thing he gets is the lover of his life, and that is you and me. Praise the Lord. The man we're going to talk about for a few moments is Jacob. The son of Isaac, try to bring you up to speed. All during the life of the great patriarch Jacob, there was Jacob's way and there was God's way. When Jacob was born, he was the second born of twins. His mother was Rebekah. Esau was his brother. And the Bible says that during birth, as Esau was coming forth, That Jacob reached and grabbed his heel. The meaning of Jacob's name is heel catcher. Schemer. The self-reliant. Jacob come out of the birth canal trying to scheme his way. You see, the firstborn held rights to the birthright. And we see here that Jacob, he was already, he hadn't, he hadn't even got his feet under him yet. And he was already working how to try to get and see the birthright, the birthright um, or, the, or the majority of the inheritance to the firstborn is indicative to all of the promises of God. Jacob was going, was trying to do his best to get what God, the promises of God through his own strength. So the meaning of Jacob's name was heel catcher, supplanter, schemer, the self-reliant. And a schemer he was. Now, as it was custom, as I said, Esau being the firstborn, he was entitled to the birthright. And later in life, Jacob schemed and talked Esau into selling his birthright for a pot of stew. Isaac was old and near death and couldn't see well and wanted Esau to kill some venison for him. And while Esau was hunting to obtain a blessing for his father, Jacob and Rebekah, they prepared a meal for Isaac and covered Jacob in goat hair to fool his father. You know the story. Scheming. Jacob met Rachel and fell in love with her. And through his scheming and planning, planning, it cost him 14 years. 14 years of his life. There is a big cost when you and I try to do things our way. When we try to do things our way. Jacob loved God, and God loved Jacob. There's no doubt about that. But he always tried to bypass God and plan his way through life. Now, we could go on and on, but for the sake of time, here we find the time when Jacob, in the Scripture, where we are now, we come to the time when Jacob finally comes to the end of himself. He was in a situation where Esau, his brother, 
was coming to meet him after all of these years. Remember, Jacob stole his birthright. And I really believe that Jacob, of course the scripture bears it out, Jacob was scared to death. He was scared that Esau was going to kill him. He was in a situation where Esau was coming to meet him after all of these years of separation. And, and Jacob was afraid. So Jacob began to scheme his way through the ordeal. Now notice with me. and I, Time won't allow, but you, you can go home and you can read chapters, the, 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 the first part of chapter 32. How that Jacob, he, he gathered all of his camels and all of his um, all of his riches and he would he he would scheme he would scheme in his mind he would say okay I'm going to send half of them this way and half of them this way and I'm going to stand back here and if he attacks them then I'll be safe and I'll go with this crowd over here I mean there was a continual scheming that he was involved in he finally come to the place Where there was Esau, him, and the river. Esau coming toward Jacob. So he sends Rebekah, Leah, all of the children, all of the camels, all of the livestock. All He sends them across the river Jabbok. And here's where we are. Verse number 24. And Jacob was left alone. There was a time in his life that all of the schemes were gone, all of the acumens were gone, all of the tricks, all of his ability, all of his uh, capabilities of making decisions on his feet, thinking fast on his feet to get out of this, to get out of that, all of that was gone. The Bible says that Jacob was left alone. Adrian Rogers was reading behind him on this message today. Adrian Rogers said, carnal man, does not naturally want to find himself alone with God. He wants to keep busy. But sometimes God will force you and I into seclusion. He will force us into a place not to punish us, not for, to do anything else, but to show us some things. We see, for those of you that like alliteration, we see isolation, we see confrontation, and we'll see desperation and then revelation. That'll travel through this. But notice what it says in the scripture. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. Until the breaking of the day. Jacob had sent his family over. Jacob had become helpless. There was no resources to plan with. He'd run out of ideas. Have you run out of ideas? Have you run out of ideas yet? Have you went over everything in the situation in your mind? Have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? Have you run out of ideas yet? Jacob had run out of ideas. Notice what it says here. It says, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. It does not say... That Jacob wrestled with a man. It says the man wrestled with Jacob. God's been wrestling some of us for a long time. 
trying to get us to give up and let him be God in our lives. It says here in the scripture, and I'm sort of getting away from my notes just looking at observing the text. It says, and Jacob was left alone and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. It took a long time. All night. Symbolic of God getting us to the place of surrender is not an easy task. And most of the time, most of the time, to get us to the place of surrender in our lives, God's going to have to do something drastic. He's going to have to allow something drastic to happen. Notice verse 25. And by the way, I want to bring this out as I studied this. And Jacob was left alone and there wrestled a man. This is also mentioned in Hosea chapter number 12, verses 3 and 4. But when you study this man out, who was this man? The text bears in the Greek and, well, excuse me, the Hebrew. It bears out that this was a pre-incarnate Christ. Why would Christ want to get involved in something like that? That's why he came. He came to take your problems for you. But sometimes he will have to wrestle you. Jesus Christ, the cross. Is it Jesus Christ and him crucified? Or is it going to be the schemer? That's the choice. That's the choice that we're, we're looking at here. Again, Jacob was not wrestling with God. God was wrestling with Jacob. God was trying to subdue Jacob into trusting him. Sometimes God is going to have to put you and I push you and I up against the wall. And there is nowhere to turn. There is no way of escape. There is nothing that we can do on our own to get us out of the situation that we find ourselves in. Notice what it says. It says it wrestled with a man until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he, the he there is God. It's not Jacob. You've got to get you, we've got to get, stay with with who, what's going on. And when he, God, or the Lord Jesus Christ, pre-incarnate, saw that he prevailed not against Jacob. He touched him on the hollow of his thigh. How many of us have had to be touched in the hollow, so to speak? Paul, he sought three times for the thorn. The Lord said, my grace is sufficient. But don't think it strange that God, and, and don't think that God won't do something like this. He will cripple you. 
not out of anger, but so that you'll live and so that you'll survive. And just so that you and I can see the light of day and darkness would, would be no more in our life. Sometimes he'll have to push us into this position because Jacob, he was the schemer. We, Jacob, he had nowhere to go. And the Lord said, and the, script, the scripture says, when, 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 when that didn't work, he had him in isolation. He had him, he had him where, he, hey, he could have, they could, he, they could have had been a count meeting. You and I, there's something inside of us that makes us want to hold on and solve our own problems. I always think about Katie, my daughter, and I think about those that the Lord has sent here and is continuing to send here, send here that has struggled with addiction. It's the same way. It's the same application. Sometimes you and I, as an addict, we will have to be put in isolation and then we will... It's not that we're, we're, we're struggling against and God... God is looking at us. And he sees us struggling with sin. And he's looking with us and he tries to grab us. He tries to grab us and, and we... I, I, I can lay it down. I can, I, I can lay it down. I'll, I'll do this. I'll do that. that. And God all along, all along is wrestling with me, wrestling with me. And even, even the things that's going on in my life that is trying to drive me insane, God is wrestling with me. Finally, the scripture again says, when he saw that he didn't prevail, God touched him. And the fight left. It ended the fight. He began, he went from resisting to clinging. That's where business picks up. That's where things start to change. Hallelujah, y'all. How many of you, how many of you, some of us are halting on our thigh or limping some of us are limping right now and we're saying, God, why'd you let this happen? It's because I need you to step out of the way so I can deal with this situation. I don't want to jump ahead. But after everything was said and done, and I need to go back to the text. And I'm, but after everything was said and done, there come Esau. While God the Holy Ghost was working on Jacob, yes, sir. he was working on Esau. Because when Esau saw him, the Bible says that Esau ran to him and grabbed him by the neck and began to embrace him, saying, Oh, brother, where have you been? I've been missing you all of these years, and all along, Jacob was struggling 
Let's quickly look at it because there's, there's a little bit more here. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched him in the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And the angel, the pre-incarnate Lord, he said, let me go. For the day breaketh. Jacob said, I'm not turning you loose. Because I'm now in your presence. I'm in the presence of the Lord. He said, I will not turn you loose until you bless me. Whatever, hallelujah, whatever it is that you're going through right now, you tell the Lord, I will not turn you loose. I will not turn you loose until you bless me. No matter what it is, no matter what the problem is, hallelujah. Verse 27, I'll try to hurry across because there's so much preaching and teaching here. And he said unto him, this is the Lord, he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. Sometimes God will ask you and I to tell us who we to tell, for us to tell him who we really are. Instead of Jacob saying, Jacob, he was saying, Lord, I'm a schemer. I've tried to handle all these problems, all, all these things, all these years on my own. That's my name. That's, that's my name. I'm a surplanter. I'm a schemer. I've done things my own way. I've approached every devil of hell my own way. I've approached this my own way. I've approached that my own way. I am a deceiver. And the Lord says, well, today you'll be no longer called Jacob. Today your name will be Israel. Israel means a prince of God. That's how it works. That is the beginning of the understanding of a victorious Christian life is the abnegation or the destruction of self. Jesus said, if any man come after me, let him deny himself and pick up his cross and follow me. That's the way it's got to be. And you say, Brother Jeff, have you got it? You got it licked? No. I don't. But I know it's there. And I'll, I will tell you this. During the times that I do Surrender to it. It works. I, 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 I don't do it every day. I don't do it. I'm, a, I'm still learning. It seems like one day I'm Jacob and the next day I'm Israel. <laughs> but you know God's patient. He's patient. He's patient with his people. And long suffering. He's, he's patient with us. Praise the Lord. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men. And hast prevailed. 
Someone has well said, and I probably won't be able to quote it right, it's better to be, it's better to be a limping Israel than a lying, cheating Jacob. That's good stuff. Yeah. And, and, and listen, I, w- I want to make sure that we understand before we close tonight that, that God is, th- this message, this message and this scenario with Jacob becoming Israel, it is, it's the same thing as progressive sanctification. I had a I had a I had a I had a, a gentleman this past week that had been in church all his life and asked me what is sanctification. Wes Franklin's going to know what that means. Wes Franklin is going to know what positional sanctification is, your standing in Christ, our standing in Christ, our position as of righteousness. Our position in Christ being clean, standing before God. But we're also going to know and understand with the help of God what progressive sanctification is. Progressive sanctification is a Jacob becoming an Israel. That's what that is. That's what that is. And hey, we need that. We need that in our lives for us to, to live a victorious life, for us to be able to understand that, hey, we do not have to be under the burden, under the thumb of Satan all the time. And Jacob asked him, verse 29, we're about to go home. Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, wherefore is that thou dost ask after my name? I can't explain that. I, I I don't you know he he had had an encounter with God. He had had an encounter with the pre incarnate Christ. He had, had he had an encounter. Wouldn't it have been wouldn't it have been something? He wouldn't have, he wouldn't have understood it no way if, if he would have said this is Jesus of Nazareth in whom thou persecutest. He he wouldn't understand that he wouldn't have understood that anyway. But God in turn was saying, you know, and you know what? Each and every one of us, we know that God is wrestling with us. You cannot deny because there's some kind of feeling that goes on inside of that of a believer's life and a believer's heart that even though we're trying to handle the problem, there's something, something, and that, that something is someone that is wrestling with us. Trying to get us to give the problem to him. And Jacob, and he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face. And my life is preserved. Verse 31. And he passed over Peniel. And the sun rose upon him. And he halted on his thigh. The sinew, the children of Israel, from this story, they would not eat the part of the the joint. And this joint in which, uh, that is spoken of here, this, this place that runs from the spine all the way down the back of the leg, that's where God touched him, down to the heel. Heel snatcher. God, God's got a plan. And God's got victory for us. And that victory was won at Calvary's cross. Amen. Let's stand. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. We'll take just a moment and, uh, you know, as a lot of times in a setting like this and we're going home I'm not trying to prolong anything but 
you know, in a setting like this, uh, one might say, well, there's really no need for, a, for an invitation, you know. But that's not true. That's not true. There's always a need for an invitation. And if you've got something in your life right now, if, you, if the Lord has showed you tonight that you are Jacob and you're wrestling against God concerning that problem in your life, you can give it to Him. You can give it to Him. Maybe you're here tonight. Maybe you're listening on Facebook. Maybe you've heard this. And maybe it's something about it has spoken to your heart. You too. Your name can be changed from Jacob to Israel. You call upon his name. You call upon the name of the Lord. You can call upon the name of the Lord for salvation. And you can call upon the name of the Lord for anything else also. Our God is not limited. Our God is not limited. He's not too far away that He cannot reach down right now into the very situation that you're worried about, the very situation that you're praying about, the very situation that you're struggling with right now. Praise the name of the Lord. God is a good God. He's plenteous in mercy. He's a good God. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Plus, pray, pray with these. Thank you, Lord. You take time to pray. Take time to talk to the Lord for a few moments. It'll help you through the remainder of the week. It'll help you on your journey. Lord Jesus, we thank you. Lord, you know, Lord, what we're going through. Lord, help us, Lord, to give it to you. Help us, Lord. Help us, dear Heavenly Father. Lord, your sacrifice, Lord, paid for an awful lot. It paid for victory. Lord, help us, Lord, to, to leave ourselves and our thoughts, Lord, and our worries out of the way, Lord, that you may work on our behalf. Lord, when we place our faith in you, Lord, when we begin to do that, Lord, in your work and your, your, your vicarious death, that's when the Holy Spirit will begin to work. Lord, we have so far to go. We've not come, Lord, to a place of all-knowing and all-enlightenment. We're not. We're not at that place. But, Lord, we do know, Lord, that Your work, whatever it is, is a perfect work. And You've provided a perfect work for Your people. And Lord, help us, Lord, to see, Lord, grace. See, Lord, and experience the grace of God. Experience these things. Experience the knowledge. Experience these things, Lord, that passes understanding. Lord, allow us to continue, Lord, to experience these things. And Lord, also let us recognize, Lord, when the flow stops, let us recognize, Lord, that we might be in the way. Lord, help us. Lord, bless your people. Bless your people. Bless all the families that are represented here tonight. Lord, bless those that are watching by social media. Lord, we love you and we'll be looking forward, Lord, to worshiping again corporately with our people. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you so much. You're dismissed.